tell us how EOB is doing? Uh, like any new guy, just trying to figure things out at this point. What does it mean to the program to be able to attract a guy like that uh, player of his caliber? Uh, we've talked about it a lot. This is an attractive place. We've got good recruiters, and uh, we've got a lot of momentum. We've got a great city and a great university to recruit to, so we're going to attract a lot of kids that have that kind of uh, stature. You know, I mean, those are program-changing recruits. Uh, you know, <laughs> he's not practicing very much. I mean, we got to we got to coach up guys that are going to try to help us win football games this year. That's that's the main focus. Do you have any idea on? What it'll take, or do you think you'll you'll have a chance to, to get a waiver? Or do I don't. Kind of I don't know how that process works, honestly. So I'm worried about coaching the guys that are out there right now. That's that's what our focus is right now. How are guys handling the camp grind so far? As we're now, mm, a little bit. Into I think it's probably a little uncharted territory for them. Uh, we 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 practice hard. We coach hard. We practice hard. <clears throat> I don't think that's happened around here in a while. So. You know, we got a lot of banged up guys, got a lot of sore guys, and you know everybody in camp's dealing with the same stuff. I mean, we got a lot of guys on the sidelines that are in the training room that that you know need to get healthy and get out there and, and, and practice. Um, <clears throat> just don't think that's happened around here, you know, in the last few years. So um, we're getting good work. You know, we're we're logging the reps and we've been happy with their effort and happy with with what's going on. We just we got to get guys healthy. We got about about a dozen and a half guys on the sidelines not not participating right now. So uh, got to work through that. Um, <clears throat> you know, like I said, everybody's in the same boat. Everybody's tired and sore. You know, get out there and play. The only way you get better. Did you, you miss the humidity teams? of a Texas August? Huh? Did you miss the humidity of a Texas August? This is the greatest practice <laughs> environment ever. I mean, the way we got this schedule set up, it's <clears throat> it's great. I mean, it's the, the best part of the day is about 8 o'clock at night. You know, our first five games are from 7 o'clock to 10.30. So that's when we're practicing, and it's it's awesome. So we've been getting good quality work, and, and we've had great weather to do so. You mentioned to us in the spring that there was an adjustment physicality-wise at all positions because you demanded that. How are the guys kind of embracing that, and how does that play out for you and your program now? Uh, I, I, for the most part, everybody's embracing it. I mean, like I said, we've been getting good quality work. I mean, the effort's there, the the, the energy's there. Uh, we're logging the reps, we're getting the work. Um, you know, it's just it's it is physical. You know, and there's there's too many guys on the sidelines right now, and uh, you know, our athletic tra training department's doing a great job getting guys out. We haven't lost anybody long term in camp. I mean, that hasn't happened. So uh, you know, we've <clears throat> we've got you know some minor things going on. I mean, uh, that uh, you know, need need you know, with a, a little bit of time, there's some things that have passed, but uh, we're going to keep being physical. I mean, that's the only way that you can, <clears throat> you know, train guys to to, to play uh, that style of ball. You know, so uh, we got to plan, keep moving forward. We're about eight days in, a little over halfway with camp. Uh, we'll go all the way through Sunday of next week and Sunday of this week. So we got a full a whole, whole another week left of the same stuff. Uh, and then we'll try to uh, we'll, we'll have to transition a little bit just because of school and all that. Have you seen much in terms of how, how those two slots will play out, or is it still too early to kind of? You know? Yeah, the two new guys, they've established themselves as, as starters, you know, at this point in time. I mean, the, you know, Keenan and, and, uh, and uh, uh, 64. Right. Uh, right. Bart Dennis has uh, got to, uh, they got to keep improving. You know, we knew that in the spring, you know, and we didn't see the improvement that we needed to in the spring. We brought uh, Gio and, and, and uh, Murphy in here <coughs> to, because they've got experience. And you can tell that they've got experience. So they've both been playing well. Um, you know, Justin's, uh, he's an old hand now. I mean, he's got, he's got old parts like, like I do, like you do, Mark. So uh, he, he's, uh, he, we got to be careful with him. You know, so but they 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 they've they've brought to the inside what we what we needed them to bring to the inside. The, the, the Geo, I believe his history was, you know, he had the injury and he sort of retired and then kind of came back. And you know, to have a guy like that, and you've seen one motivation is not a factor. I mean, he wants to be out there, wants to play, but to have a guy like that is that. Different? Yeah, well, both of them. They they they're both graduated. They're both older, and they've both played uh, Power Five football. You know, so they they they've brought what we needed them to bring and. You know, we need we need Keenan and 
and that dentist to 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 step up and give us more depth, you know, and to compete. And because uh, we're gonna end up, we're not, we're, we're you're gonna play eight linemen all the time, every game. You know, Jack. I've been happy with Jack Raymond. You know, he's been doing a good job, and we need to continue to search for backup tackles. With the uh, kind of meat and potatoes of the schedule coming up this week, culminating in the scrimmage Sunday. Uh, what are you still hoping to see from some of the competition? You know, some of the spots are still in competition camp. Everything. I mean, everything's up for grabs. You know, I mean, there, there's there, whether it's a starter, whether it's a backup, whether it's special teams, whether it's you know any of that. I mean, everything's up for grabs, and and just need to keep playing and keep competing. We've had two live practices where we've tackled, got good work. You know, I think around 70 snaps in each practice. So that that was good. You know, we'll have two more. Um, prior to that scrimmage. So, you know, we're right in the middle of it right now. So there's there's decisions, and, and I learn something new about this team every time we line up when we do that. So uh, we'll keep grinding it and, and uh, all the way through the weekend and then probably switch gears here a week from today. I know this probably had a lot of new faces. The defensive line, um, has anything started to shake itself out over there in terms of, I know you guys are going to rotate a lot of guys. Yeah, I really haven't seen anything shake out yet, you know. So we're, we're, we've got a lot to choose from. That's the deepest position that we have. <clears throat> Said that coming out of spring, and we added, you know, some guys. Uh, you know, so uh, it, it, that that's as competitive as, as anything that exists on our team right now. So, um, you know, I, I we we've had that discussion as far as we're going to have to start narrowing things down. We can't play 16 D linemen. That didn't happen anywhere. So uh, there needs to be comp uh, competition to be able to narrow that down. It's we're far from making decisions at that point. How's your feel on just the overall talent? you have on your hand right now and the potential of it. oh it, it's fine it, it, it's it's it, it's uh it's better than it was in the spring uh you know and probably next spring it'll probably be better and then next camp it'll be better and i think we'll continue to bring guys in here that are gonna be able to continue to elevate this program Dana, on, uh, I want to ask you, Doug Belt, you know, he's been with you now two spots. What did you maybe see from <clears throat> when you hired him at, at West Virginia and then kind of as you've added on the responsibilities through the year? Well, he's a, he's a you know, he's an ex-quarterback. He's an ex-team captain. He's a small college guy that just loves the game, you know, comes from the deep south of Valdosta that, you know, is, is, football is pretty important. So just loves the game, you know, spent three years at Alabama with, with uh, Coach Saban, you know, learned a lot. So the knowledge that he brings, the recruiting capacity that he brings, the, the just the overall, you know, there's some guys that you can just tell they're going to be head coaches, and he's one of those guys that's going to be a head coach. With the freshman, I know you're probably going to want to redshirt as many as you can. It's something you preached about some in the spring, but anybody of the freshmen that have come in that have showed you maybe that may, may not be an option for them, or that's still something you're trying to. No, there are not too many of them, right? I mean, there's there's not too many freshmen. There's it's less than ten. The yeah, there's not. There's three old linemen. There's a receiver. There's uh, you know, there's some walk-ons, you know. But uh, from the scholarship guys, there's only a couple on defense, and I'd say there's probably only about six or seven. So we I haven't made those decisions right now. It's always tough for old linemen. I wouldn't anticipate any of those three guys playing. Um, you know, and. and, and We've talked about the majority of our team has red shirts available, you know, and we had this conversation yesterday. I mean, if guys are, if guys have red shirts available and they're third on the depth chart, then I'm going to try to red shirt them. I don't care if they're a senior or, you know, there's there's some guys that are going into their senior year that have red shirts available, and if they're not going to be playing very much, then I'm going to try to red shirt them. I mean, that's how you develop a program. That's how you build a program and develop kids. And, you know, we got we got some seniors that are 20 years old. That's crazy to me. I mean, I had my average starting age last year uh, at the place that I was at was like 23 years old because you get older guys with transfers and you redshirt them. And some guys redshirt in high school. Like my son redshirted first grade. Well, he was pissed too, but it's the right thing for him to do. Uh, so he redshirted first grade, you know, repeated it. And, you know, you get him to redshirt in, in college. And now when he's a senior, you're looking at a 23-year-old. I mean that's how that's how building a program and developing players, uh, that's how that works, you know. So uh, we're looking at all those guys. We know who has red shirts available. It's one of the first things I said in the team meeting in here when we reported a couple weeks ago is everybody everybody that has a red shirt that's on the table. Derek's probably not red shirting, but uh, <laughs> for the most part, 
right? So guys have it if it doesn't make sense to play guys. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna burn a year with 50 snaps if we can redshirt. So that that'd be a that'd be a weekly conversation. This four game thing we talked a lot about it. That's that's important. So what well, green light guys or red light guys, and we're gonna do everything we can to win the game. But if it doesn't involve that specific guy, we're gonna save the game. And if we can at the end of the year get it to where you play him four games and gain a year, then that's going to be something that we're going to be interested in doing. Coach, how, how, much is, how much is that four-year, that four-game situation? changes game? everything. It changes everything. <laughs> and, and I think uh, there's a bunch of different scenarios. One of the, one of the reasons why that rule is in place was I had, I had a fourth-team running back. Actually, I think he was a fifth-team running back, Martel Petaway, who's going into his, I think, junior year, junior or senior year right now at WVU. Uh, he redshirted in game 12. I didn't have a running back. So we went to Iowa State game 12, and I pulled his red shirt. He rushed for 180 yards, and we won the game. And he was a team player, and he played about 16 snaps maybe in the bowl game. <laughs> and his year is done. That's unfair. So that's, you know, injuries can get to that. Development can get to that. You can think a guy's ready, play him early, and he can't handle it. So then you red shirt him. So it's, it changes everything, and we'll talk about each kid when it pertains to, to you know, whether we are or whether we aren't going to be able to do that. Thanks, Coach. All good? Yeah, thank you, man. All right. Sir. We'll see you guys. Sir.